Hey guys, I'm working on a new uh, course currently at the moment for my Patreon page and it's regarding the chords and how to find uh, the cadence, let's say chords on every single key, how to find the minor chord, how to find the major chords, the basic things that we really need in flamenco. And I decided to share with you guys the first video here on uh, YouTube. In this video, I will be talking about the Greek musical modes and how they can help us a little bit understand more the palos. Uh, I will be focusing mainly on three modes being the tonic of certain palos that we have. Now, by tonic, I mean uh, where we actually resolve. So if we're playing, for example, something like the Soleil, as you know, we always are resolving E. And if we're playing the Alegrias, we resolve on C. If we're playing Farruca, we resolve on A. So this is what I mean by tonic, where we actually resolve. Okay, and these modes that I'm going to talk about today are going to be the Ionian mode, which is the first mode, uh, the major mode and the Phrygian mode, which is the third mode of the C major, uh, or the third mode in general, and then we have the Aeolian mode, which is the sixth mode. And the reason I'm doing this is not for me to explain to you the modes in any way, so which I will do later, but in a brief way. And it's this is not the point of the video, it's just I want to show you guys the link between modes and palos and how they can really help us in flamenco. A brief explanation about the modes. Uh, let's take C major, for example, from here. Now just pretend I don't have the capo, it's just easier to have the capo on, okay? So let's take this C major shape, let's say. And now if we take from C to C one octave up, as you know, we don't have any flats or any sharp or anything, so it's easier to begin with. If we, if we do like this, from C to C one octave, we're going to get the C major and the tonic being C. Now let's do the same thing, but instead of going from C to C, this time I'm going to choose another starting point. Instead of C to C, I'm going to take D and I'm going to use the same notes of C major, so nothing is going to be changed about that, and I'm going to go one octave starting from D this time. So instead of going from C to C like this, I'm going to start from D, one octave up. Now if we do this right here, the tonic is no longer C anymore, it became D. And now this is considered to be on the Dorian mode. The Dorian is the second mode, of the Greek musical modes. We have the first is Ionian and the second is Dorian. Now let's do the same experiment again, but this time I'm going to start on E. I'm going to go one octave from E using the C major scale, so I'm not going to change anything about that, the notes themselves. I'm going to go from E, one octave all the way up. Now the tonic also has changed and it became E. This is now the Phrygian mode, okay? The third mode of the major key, the major scale. Now why the third mode, you might ask? It's because it's the third note from C. So this is the first mode. First note, first mode, we have C, Ionian. Second note, we have second note, Dorian. We have Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, and Aeolian, Locrian. So we have these seven modes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and also the seven modes that I listed, depending on which note you start from. Again, C is the Ionian, the first note. If we start now from D to D, it's the second note, so we have the Dorian. If you start from the third note, one octave up, we have the Phrygian. If you start from the fourth note and you go up, we have the Lydian. If we start from the, and so on, if we start from the fifth, we have the Mixolydian. And you can see where I'm going from here, okay? Now, an extremely important point I want to share with you guys here is that when you're playing, for example, from E to E, as we did before, the E Phrygian, instead of thinking about it as the third mode of C major and always thinking, keeping in the back of your mind the C major scale, I want you to instead think of it as a key by itself. So when you're looking for, for example, C Phrygian, that is a key by itself so don't start looking where is the major it's the third mode of something so where is the major key of it just try to think of it as a key by itself so if i ask you to play c phrygian mode immediately you put the c and you play let's say this is the c phrygian mode if you want to look for the d phrygian mode these are all let's say keys by themselves try to memorize them this way as if they are keys by themselves and not just where we are playing the major but starting from a different point because that will not make so much sense eventually, really. If you're going to think of it as this is C major but we are just starting on E, that's it. But that's not going to solve anything or give us anything really special. How we will really benefit is that if we think of it as a key by itself. So E, compare it to E major instead. Instead of going uh, E, the third mode of C major and doing, using the same notes, 
compare it to E major itself. The E major we have F sharp, we have G sharp, and we have C sharp, D sharp, right? So what changes did we do to the E major to get to to this mode, the Phrygian mode? This is how you should really be thinking about it. Instead of just the third mode of the major scale, try to think about it as a key by itself, okay? Now let's start with the three modes that I wanted to focus on mainly for this video, which is the Ionian, I said, the Ionian mode, the Phrygian mode, and the Aeolian mode. Uh, let's start with the Ionian mode, which is really, really very simple. There is no necessary for any explanation because it's the same thing as the C major. So if you say C major or C Ionian, they are the same thing. C major, Ionian is the same. The tonic is C, okay? So now let's move on to the Phrygian mode, which is basically the third mode of the major scale. So we have the Ionian, we have one, two, three to get the Phrygian mode. So we have again, one, two, three. And now we have the Phrygian mode. If we go up seven notes, this is basically the Phrygian mode. We have, okay, right there. Now, something that's that bothered me a lot, and I think it might, probably might bother you if you, uh, at least un until you get to it. Uh, this Phrygian mode, the common, we all know flamenco is is uh, based a lot on the Phrygian mode. We use the Phrygian mode so often when we go, if we're playing solea, if we're playing fandango, if we're playing bulurias, if we're playing seguerias, if we're playing rondenia, minera, we have all the palos that are based, always that are resolving on the Phrygian mode, basically like that, but something is not right. And that's what I was thinking about and I was asking myself all the time before, okay, Phrygian mode, that's fine. But the Phrygian mode has a G, G natural. And this chord has a G sharp. What is happening there? That confused me for a while. Like I couldn't really understand why if the Phrygian mode is, oh, it's everything, let's say, based on the Phrygian mode, why do we have this G sharp? Where did this come from? Again, let's repeat the Phrygian mode one more time from the C major. The, it's going... We have the G natural. So if we play E, this is the one we get. And we never, we, well, we don't really resolve here. If we're playing solea, we don't do that. So where did this come from? Here's the question. Now, this came from the, when we go to that chord and we use the G sharp, we are shifting modes. So we are all the time, basically we are always shifting modes when we are playing. When we go to that chord, specifically the E flat nine or E seven or whichever chord, we are uh, switching to the Phrygian dominant. Now, what is the Phrygian dominant? You might ask the Phrygian dominant. If you just Google, what is the Phrygian dominant? You're going to get the result saying the Phrygian dominant is the fifth mode of the harmonic minor. Before you close the video and leave, wait a second. Uh, harmonic minor, let's check what is harmonic minor. A, harmonic minor. I'm going to take A because we are on that key here. A, harmonic minor is going. We have the G sharp. That's it. A, harmonic minor. We are saying A, harmonic minor. The tonic is A and we have a G sharp. So that solves it. The Phrygian dominant is the fifth mode of the A harmonic minor, that specific scale that I played right there. Why is it the fifth? Well, let's see. If we count five, they say it's the fifth. So let's count five notes from the A. One, two, three, four, five. We have E. That's why it's called the Phrygian dominant here. We have... So when you do something... Now we can perfectly play the G sharp without any problem. All this, all these chords that I just played are inside the Phrygian dominant. Now we have A, F, all the notes inside of the, the harmonic minor fit perfectly. We have no notes going outside and E, we have the G sharp, which fits perfectly. But we have another problem. When we play G, if we're playing solea, this G come from? Well, here is where we are also switching modes between Phrygian and Phrygian dominant. So that, that's how it really works. A, G, these are all just Phrygian mode. 
and when we go to E, flat 9 or E7 or whatever chord, where we have the G sharp, that is the Phrygian dominant. Now lastly, I want to talk about the Aeolian mode. Uh, the Aeolian mode is the sixth mode, so we have to jump six notes from, if we take C major again, let's jump six notes from C major. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Tonic now is now A, so we have, if we go one octave up from A to A, on the C major, we can think of it like this for now, just like this, we have Aeolian mode, tonic is now A. This is also the same thing as we talked about in the Phrygian mode section, where we also sometimes, if we're playing Farruka for example, we also have the E7, which includes the G sharp. So here we can also think of it as switching between the Phrygian dominant and the Aeolian, or basically the Phrygian dominant is, is also including A minor, so you can think of it as also Phrygian dominant. But the problem is, if we think of it, of it as Phrygian dominant, we are saying that the root, the tonic, is E. But in the Farruka, for example, the tonic is not E. We are not going... We're not doing that in the Farruka. We are always resolving on A. This is our tonic, A. That's why we are switching between the Phrygian dominant to get the C sharp, the G sharp. And we go to A. So. In this case, in the Aeolian mode now, we go back to A being our tonic, and that would be the sixth mode. Now let's get to some examples now, and I will show you how we use these modes on Palos. So let's start with the Ionian mode, which is basically the major mode as we talked about before. Uh, now the first thing that comes to my mind, it's very, very clear, is the Alegrias. Alegrias slash Cantinias really is very similar, so... Let's start with that. So if we are playing Alegrias or Cantinias on C major, for example, it's going like this. closing on the C major itself, the major chord, okay? The same thing now, for example, basically, if we're playing on the E major scale itself here, or E major key, let's say, uh, it's going to be our home base. So we have here going... And not going... We're not closing on the, the Phrygian mode here, right? This is the Phrygian mode of the E major, and this is not where we're closing in Alegrias. Of course, you might hear it at some times. This is something to do with creativity. Sometimes they close a falsetta or something here, but they always, the, the real, where they really resolve, it's going to be always here. So that indicating that we finished and we went back home, right? Uh, the same thing also on A. scale and we are always resolving on A major, okay? Another example is the Guajiras, for example, when we play like this. We are always resolving on the major key, the major chord, the Ionian mode in this case, okay? Now if you take the Guajiras and you resolve on the Aeolian mode tonic, which is the F sharp in this case, it will sound like this. Here. Although it sounds really nice, this is not our home base tonic still. So you can do that for creativity. I have already heard this before where they go for example like this. It's possible to do something like this for creativity, but it's not, again, our home base, it's not our tonic. Okay, so you can use this for creativity, let's say, to link a nice falsetta, just the way I, I did, kind of. And then, after you finish the falsetta, you can go back on the Ionian uh, tonic and then resolve back on A. That would sound really nice, I think. Uh, Sevillanas. Sevillanas, uh, it, 
Sevillanas is one of those puzzles as well that is very versatile, so you can play it on any of these three modes, whether it's Ionian, Phrygian, or uh, Aeolian. Now, in the case of the Ionian mode, for example, played on the A major, it's going to sound something like this here. Okay, that would be the Sevillanas played on the A major uh, key. Let's say now we take it to another key, still on the Ionian mode, let's choose uh, E major, for example, and we do the same thing. It's going to sound uh, something very similar, no, we have. And we can do a falsetta or something from here. Okay, and so on, really, if you take a D major, you can take it on whichever key that you want. Uh, on Ionian, it will be sounding very similar to that. Another palo as well on the Ionian mode would be the tangios also. So let's take the tangios now. We have the rhythm of the tangios going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three like this. And now if you play it on the A major, for example, we have... That would be the sound of the tangios also played on the A major. Another palo as well would be the cabales. The cabales is just like the segrias in rhythm, but it's on the major key. It's on the Ionian key, basically. So let's take, for example, the usual segrias on the Phrygian mode first, and then I can switch from the Phrygian to the, to the Ionian so that you can see what I mean here. So on the Phrygian mode we have... is the Ionian mode. So this is Cabales, basically. Switching from the Phrygian mode to the Ionian mode would sound like this. They usually do it at the end of the Segrias. It sounds really, really nice. Okay, like I said, this is the Phrygian. The Ionian. Going like this, okay? Now let's discuss the Phrygian mode. So in the Phrygian mode we have, as we as we mentioned before, the seven modes. The Phrygian is the third one. So counting from the beginning, from the Ionian, three up, we have one, two, three. This is the Phrygian mode. It's E. E Phrygian on the C major, okay? Just to be clear. On the C major, the Phrygian is E. Here. What immediately comes to mind if we if we play here, it's directly the Solea, no? If we play Solea, it's clearly, it's it's just so many types of solea. So when I say solea, it's it's just a, a huge bunch of palos. It's all connected. So let's just say solea for now, okay? We have. C major or A minor, okay? So Leia is clear, no? So let's go ahead and go for the, let's say, the second thing that comes to mind, the bulerias. So if we play the bulerias, I'm going to take A because A is the most common, uh, most traditional, let's say, key to play bulerias. or whatever okay this is the bulerias it's very common that we are always closing on the a here 
if we're playing on the A region. Now, if you're playing on, this is por medio. They also, just by the way, uh, this is considered to be por medio. So, bulerías por medio, we have here. Por medio means in the middle in Spanish. Medio is middle, arriba is up, abajo is down. So, when they say por medio, we have this one right here. When they say por arriba, we're playing up because it's, it's up. This is the middle string of the basses they are referring to. We have this is upper string is the six, arriba is on the top. And the A is the middle string between the six and the four, so they say por medio, a root bass. And the one uh, just under it is the, the fourth, the last bass string we have, so they say abajo, which is down. Again, one more time, arriba, medio, and abajo. So if you're playing, for example, they're, they're referring to the string placement and being the root bass of the key. So if we're playing por abajo, it's going to be here. What comes to your mind when I play por abajo? What is the chord? Do you know it? It's D. Now, if you're playing Phrygian mode, por abajo, which is solo quiero caminar from Paco, for example. Right? It's, it's played on uh, por abajo, let's say, no? On the D. And por medio, the, the A, Phrygian we have is this one. Por arriba, the E Phrygian we have is this one right here. Okay? So if you play bulerias, for example, por arriba, we can get. This is uh, bulerias por arriba. And not. It's the same key and everything, but this is not. We are going to get to this. It's not that. Okay? Por arriba is the root bass being the home being E. So whatever you do, closing here, okay? We also have the solea por bulerías, or the bulerías por solea, for example, if we're playing here, we can get... ending on the E, right? However, por medio, for example, on this uh, root bass, the Frigian mode, For example, we can think of the fandangos as well. The fandangos is also always closing on the Phrygian mode, which is here, closing on the E. So even if we go... Here, this is the home base. Always remember that what I'm talking about all the time, it's the home base. It's where you feel that the, the phrase has finished and not in the middle. So you can go other places, all, all over the fretboard, you can be creative, do anything you want. But the home base, when you finish, it always has to go to the frigid mode, in this case, the E, okay? So this is the Fandangos, for example. Even there's an accent on the F, that doesn't mean I'm not finished yet. This is an accent only. This is where we finished on the E, okay? Clearly, another palo we just did, we just did previously in the Ionian section is also the Sigrias. So the Sigrias, if we play it here, we have always closing on the A Phrygian mode. So whichever the chords, let's say. Now, if I ask you, I'll tell you from now. But uh, for example, the the Aeolian of this key is the D. And the Ionian is the F, and the Phrygian is A. So in Sigirias, for example, you never hear something like to close here. I mean, obviously you can do this in when you're accompanying the cante, or if you're playing, for example, a falsetto that goes here. But at the very end of the rimate, you don't do. It's not like this. Okay, it's always closing on the A. Unless you're, again, unless you're accompanying the cante in some sections where you have to actually go to F or the baile or if you're playing a falsetta, okay? We go sometimes to F. 
In the case, I will show you one quick remati from Moraito, for example, where he's coming from... So uh, in this small section where you notice that I went to F, that was going to F just briefly and then directly going back to the A Phrygian mode, if you noticed, okay? It's not where he actually closed everything. It's just for a brief moment during the falsetto where he went there, the remate actually, and then went back to the key to, to para rematar, no? To close it. Tangos is also on the Phrygian mode. So for example, if we play on the traditional key we have on the A Phrygian, we will get... <laughs> Is. We're always closing on the A and we're not closing on F and we're not closing on the D. We're going to get to that as well later. All right, so the tangos here, for example. Another very popular palo as well is the tientos, where you play from here. always falling on the A, okay? Now let's also talk a little bit about the palos libre that we have, so without compass. Now another palo libre we have uh, that is played on the Phrygian mode as well is the rondenia, which is one of my favorite palos. The, in the rondenia we have a different tuning, by the way, which I already changed it. The sixth is in D, like this, and the third is in F sharp. And then we can get this sound here. on the C sharp and not on A and not on F sharp minor, which are by the way the keys. So uh, just for th for those who don't know the rondenia on what uh, key it is, it's basically the Ionian of the rondenia is the A, so A major. The Phrygian mode is the C sharp and the Aeolian is the F sharp minor. So if you, go, if you go for the minor, we have F sharp seven minor, F sharp uh, minor seven, and then we go for E and D. And then the C sharp. This is where the rondenia is usually played on. Okay, uh, it's always closing on C sharp. Okay, no matter what the, the falsetta you're playing, it's always when you finish everything. Again, being creative is one thing that you can start anywhere you like, but where you finish, the falsetta is on the C sharp. Okay. Now another palo libre, for example, we have is the taranta. The taranta is played on the F sharp Phrygian mode. So here. And the signature chord of the taranta we have is this one right here. So nice. No matter where you play it, uh, no, no matter where you start a falsetta, you have to end on this chord. So if you play, for example, a falsetta starting on F sharp, we have. If we start on the Aeolian mode, for example, we have here.
Moving forward, we also have the Granaina, one of the Palos Libre that we have. What is this? Phrygian mode, okay? Here, same idea like the Taranta. Finish here. Okay? Same idea, same concept. It's all on the Phrygian mode. The only difference is what is coming later in the lesson is the chords themselves, where the cadence start on every single key and how you can, uh, let's say, create a falsetta and be creative on every single key like this, resolving always at the home base, depending on the palo, whether it's Ionian, whether it's Phrygian or Aeolian. Okay? And what else do we have? Uh, we also can think of the Zapateado, which I didn't mention about it in the Ionian, but Zapateado is one of the palos that are a little bit more versatile as well. So if we're playing, for example, on E major, we, we get... Let's say we are always resolving on the E major in this case. Again, the Sevillanas that I talked about before is also versatile, so if we think about it as on the Phrygian mode, we can take... Um... Or if we take it por medio... Now, another palo as well that we didn't mention before in the Libre section, which is without compass, I mean, was the Minera as well, that was played on the Phrygian mode. Let's say we can start here. Here, we close. Now, if you do a melody starting from here... Or you can start. And close on this key, always on the freedom mode, okay? These are the, the palos that I could think of. There's so much more, obviously, for the freedom mode. And moving on the last mode that we were talking about before, which is the Aeolian mode, uh, relative minor. This one does not have as much palos as the as the Phrygian mode, and one the first one I could always just immediately think of is the Farruka. So when you're playing on the minor, we're, let's take the C major here. The relative minor is the A. If let's take it in the in the modes way of thinking about. It. So let's go up six since it's the sixth mode. We go up six notes from this note. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have A. This is the Aeolian. Okay? Home bass. Here. This is the home bass. Okay? Anything else, it's not the home base right there. Now, if you do, for example, like this. They're going to tell you, take your guitar, put it in the case and leave. <laughs> this is not going to happen, okay? Always, we are closing on the A minor, okay? Home base. Another example is, like we talked about before, the Sevillanas being very versatile, because we can also play it here. Right? 
can also be played on this key and it's it's absolutely fine on the Aeolian mode. Another uh, palo that is also can be played on the Aeolian mode is the tangos de Triana. Now if I ask you, ask you to play tangos on A minor, also you'll have to do something like this with a few things that they do as well that being the signature of that palo. So let's say... This is the tango de Triana that, as you noticed, the home base of the tango de Triana, let's say, we have always the A minor. And we're not closing on the E fridge in this case, always. In the case of the Aeolian mode, we have the A minor being home base. always on the A and not here. Paco did not do something like this. No, because he's not playing on the Phrygian mode. He went and then he closes actually. Not, not here, it's here. Okay, in the case of the Aeolian mode. Now another palo is the rumba. For example, the rumba can be perfectly played on the on the Aeolian mode or on the Phrygian mode or on the Ionian. It's very versatile palo as well, depending on what you want to do with it. Uh, the first, the, the one of the pieces that I was thinking about is obviously we all know Entre los Aguas, we know Rio Ancho from Paco, so it would be great to, to mention these as an example. So even though they are closing on the B here, they are always opening on minor so it's a little bit confusing to say if it's actually on the Phrygian or Aeolian but I would consider it to be probably more uh, Aeolian because when you finish Entre los Aguas the last part where Paco is going he always finishes on this chord which is basically back on the Aeolian chord itself right so I would say this would be an Aeolian mode, um, really. But if you if you want to play on the Phrygian mode as well, it's it's perfectly fine. If you do a, a rumba, let's say if you do something like this, perfectly, this is on the Phrygian mode. However, the melody of Rio Ancho, for example, is going from here. So that would be it for this video really uh, and the coming videos inside this course I'm going to mention and I'm going to uh, show you guys how to find all these three modes on every single key that we have. So for example where is the Ionian, where is the Phrygian mode and where is the Aeolian mode and specifically I'll be also showing you guys the, the cadence on these keys. That's why I wanted to name it something in between like cadence and modes because I also want to emphasize on this it's very important. So I hope that you liked it and I'll see you next time.